Now our third topic deals with uh, the counts of the different intervals. And in a moment, you might want to pause this video if you uh, enjoy math and logic puzzles. The basic problem is, suppose we've got, and I'll write it up, a few octaves worth, that much anyway. Suppose I asked you, how many minor thirds are there in, in the C major scale? Or any of the intervals that occur in the C major scale? How would you answer that question? Is there a systematic way that you can come up with to figure out how many of each kind of interval there are in the C major scale? Now, if that's a question that sounds like a fun and interesting question to work on on your own, pause this video now because I'm about to give you an answer. Okay, that's enough time to, for you to get to your pause buttons. Here we go. Here's the way this works. Any interval, say this one, can be thought of in either of two ways, as the interval up from C to D, or the interval down from D to C. So in order not to double count those, let's all just, always just talk about intervals up, okay? Now, instead of going with specific qualities, let's go with general types, so like seconds. How many seconds are there? Well, how many times can I start a second with a different lower note? Well, as many times as I got a different lower note. So if there are seven notes in the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then there are seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I already know that there are two kinds of seconds, and one of them is relatively uncommon. That's the half step. So if you remember two minor seconds, then I know right away, because there are seven total, there must be five major seconds. Every other one is a major second. Well, I knew that, but more specifically now, there are five of them, okay? Now, let's talk about thirds. You remember that uh, here, this one, so here, don't bother remembering how many major seconds there are. You can just figure that out from remembering how many minor seconds there are. Thirds can actually go either way. There are two, here's how you do it. Because you've got two minor seconds, and because every third contains two seconds that contain one minor second, right? Here's a minor second. Here's a third containing it as a lower step. And here's a third containing it as the upper of two steps. That happens twice. So there are four. There's one easy way to remember. Four minor seconds. Now, if you prefer remembering smaller numbers, you can also remember that there are three major thirds. And the easier way to, uh, so of course you could do that by math, and that's the most straightforward way. You want to sum to seven. Um, if you know a little bit more about music, though, uh, and about some of the theory we'll be covering later, you may know something about what are called three chord songs. So one, two, three. Three different chords that are kind of uh, the primary building blocks for harmony. And a lot of country songs uh, and other, other pop songs use just those three chords, folk songs too. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I love my dog, he was really sweet. Till one day he got hit by a train. So I went crying to my mother. And she told me you'd better go drink in a bar or something like that. Uh, so I can use just those three, uh, those three chords. And the bottom of those three chords, those three chords are each anchored by the three major thirds. So if you remember three chords, and if that's something that mean that's meaningful to you, three chord songs, three chords, you can remember three major thirds. Uh, now, if, and, and by the way, that was, might have seemed like kind of a slam on country music. I actually really enjoy a lot of country music, uh, especially like, you know, the old 70s outlaw country, stuff like this. Anyway, uh, don't want to seem anti-country. So, how do we move on from this? What's next? We've talked about seconds, we've talked about Oh, whoops, I miswrote this, sorry. 
four minor thirds, that should have been, apologies, four mi minor thirds, three major thirds. Well, what about fourths? Well, you already should remember from when we were talking about our interval qualities, there's only, if a fourth consists of three steps, there's only one spot where you've got those three whole steps in a row, whole, 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 whoop, where you have anything other than a perfect fourth. So if you remember one augmented fourth between those two tendency tones, those two unstable tones, scale degree four and scale degree seven, then simple math has to add up to seven. There have to be six perfect fourths. Now the beauty of it is that you can, you know, remember either one of these, but just, just remember those three pieces of information, you've got the whole thing. Because now fifths, well fifths are just inversions of fourths, right? So if there's one augmented fourth, there's one diminished fourth, and the rest, the other six are perfect. If there are four minor thirds, then there are four major sixths, and therefore three minor sixths, because four and three adds to seven. If there are two minor seconds, there are going to be two major sevenths, minor to major, sevenths to seconds. So two minor seconds, two major sevenths, and the remaining five must be minor. So the, the entire interval count of the, of, the, uh, of the diatonic collection can be yours simply by memorizing those three pieces of information. And that's it for this one.